DJ Hero came about mainly off the back of a few concepts we had at Freestyle uh, um, probably four years ago, something like that. Um, and we were playing around with the hip-hop game, we were using all the elements and we had just come out and we were kind of thinking how can we do a cool social game that tries to bring a bunch of people into the living room. The entire aim was to make the player feel like they're DJing, make them feel like they are controlling the music and dictating what you're hearing. That was the challenge. We loved Guitar Hero just as game fans and music fans. It was great, but we were like, okay, well, where can, how can you get other kinds of music in this? And that's where we really started to focus on the DJ side of the original concepts that we were looking at and we. From the start of the project, what we wanted to bring to the game musically was a sense of fun, I think. Mostly a sense of fun and a sense that music can live inside other music and that music can be mixed in ways that are exciting and bring something unique to both of the pieces of content that you're working with. So we decided to just go with mashups pretty much at day one. If we'd just taken a single track, got our controller, and then marked it up, that's not DJing, that's just a rhythm game. That's, you could do that on a PSP, you, could, you don't even need a controller for it. We wanted to use all music of any type, as long as we felt passionate that it was a, an amazing track, um, and then find ways to play them together with a sense of humor, um, and with a light touch, uh, in a way that would would like people to um, find something new in each song that they might not have heard before. It was nothing too serious, and it was nothing too restricted. It was just about having fun with records, which is you know, really at its heart what DJing is. So in the early days of DJ Hero, back when we were just thinking about it being a Wii product, everything was kind of driven through the the remote. And we started to think about how you could do some cool add-ons to just slip the remote into to make it feel a little bit different. But then Guitar Hero came out and we kind of really opened this idea that people will buy a, a different peripheral for their game and it, it, it actually works. And we just got our hands dirty, we just kind of ripped stuff apart and said, okay, what do we what's gotta be the core movement? You know, Guitar Hero, the core movements with the guitar are you strumming and you playing with notes. What are our core things gonna be? And we went around the office and and just friends, family, loved ones, whatever, and said, oh, what, what does a DJ do to you? And pretty much everyone went, what, 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 what? And we were like, right, people really relate to a DJ and a turntable. That's obvious. Even if people are not familiar with the turntable, they know that that's involved in some way, shape, or form. And similarly with the crossfader as well. So we thought, well, we want to make them our core gameplay elements. So the first thing was just a size test. We didn't really think about the style too much. Um, we kind of made it feel a little bit like a turntable, but it was more about how big does the platter need to be, where do the buttons need to be, what does the crossfader need to feel like. We then added some extra pieces like the euphoria button and stuff went on. And then we did another version where we started to think about styling a little bit more. And that's when we kind of got signed up with Activision and we were able to hand this whole process to Red Octane, uh, the Guitar Hero business unit, and you know, they've they know what they're doing when it comes to peripherals, so it's great to just hand over. You guys have got to make this manufacturable and robust. And a few months later, we got this other version back, and it was smaller and tighter, and everything worked differently. <clears throat> but it essentially had everything we designed in it. One of the first things that people notice about DJ Hero is there's only one turntable platter. And when you look at a real setup, there's at least two, of course. Reason for that, if the rest of the controller was like another spinning platter here. To play the game, you would have to constantly look down and see where your hands were. Because there's one, it means that you can constantly stare at the screen. By presenting people with this kind of concept, people were much more open to playing it. And it does account for everything, those core principles of DJ. The key gameplay feature on this side is your crossfader. It mimics uh, a crossfader exactly a real DJ mixer. So when the crossfader is over to the left, you hear the left turntable, over to the right, you hear the right turntable. Leave it in the middle, you play both tracks. So the game will basically tell you when you need to crossfade, you'll have to follow a path. And it's kind of like, I was liking it to the very first Commodore 64 driving game I played. It's like left or right, and you just went around the road like this. But it's, it's a nice simple mechanic, but it works really well. The other things on this side, these aren't core gameplay buttons, but these are, these are your kind of freestyle stuff. So you've got your effects dial, which is our version of the whammy bar, so you can pitch up, pitch down the track, let effects over the track. 
in predetermined areas. And you've got your euphoria button. So this is our version of star power. So once you've hit a perfect section, you can build up euphoria and you just trigger it doing this. And then that basically multiplies your score. So whatever multiplier you're in, you'll get double that again to a maximum of times eight. And to keep it looking nice and cool, we've kind of hidden all of the console specific buttons under here, which is, is a nice feature because you need them to navigate the menus, but it's kind of also nice to just shut them away and keep it quite clean. Now what we've managed to do is we found a way to map two records onto one spinning platter. We did that by having three buttons. The green button represents record A, which is the left turntable, and the blue button represents record B, which is the right turntable. Now the red button is the sample button, which allows you to drop samples over your mix as you wish, add a little bit of creativity. But what's quite nice is you can load the samples up at the start of the set list from any of the sample packs in the game. And you can actually t change the sample on the fly as well using the effects dial, so you get to play around with it a little bit. Next quite cool feature is it's full 360, it'll spin any way you want, and it's got really nice bearings, so it'll spin for quite a while. And what this allowed us to do is add a few kind of flare features in that you'll see from perhaps old school DJing, like the rewind, so you, after you've hit a certain number of notes, um, you're in a rewind, which means you can rewind the track anywhere, and literally you just spin it 360, catch it again, and the track will rewind back, and you get to play it again. So we're finding people do it either to go, like the hardcore ones that want to score big, they'll go back through a hard section, uh, like they'll save up their rewind, hit euphoria, do a hard section, then come back and do it again so they're hitting the maximum points. Now let's say in the game there's a scratch where I, on the real turntables, have gone, for instance, forward, forward, back, forward. On expert difficulty, the scratch icons in the game turn to arrows, so you have forward and back. So you would have to replicate that movement on the turntable controller. So when it gets to expert difficulty, the similarities are, are there and it's pretty tough. The mixes are as real to DJ as possible without feeling too intimidating as well because, I mean, for a person that's never you know, seen or you know, been behind a set of decks, having all that equipment in front of you can seem quite kind of overwhelming. So the idea when it came to actually um, making the mashups was to introduce the basic elements and the basic principles of DJing, but at the same time allowing the player to feel as if they were in total control of it. I think the most difficult aspect of uh, the game would probably be the, the coordination between the crossfader and uh, the turntable platter. It's kind of like rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time. It can be pretty tricky at first. You've got Grandmaster Flash at the start of the game to take you through the tutorials so you're comfortable before you get onto the harder difficulties. But when it gets to expert, the coordination between the button presses and the crossfader movements is pretty tricky. That'll be the biggest challenge, I think. Because with Guitar Hero, for instance, there's two things to concentrate on. There's the buttons and there's the strumming. With this, you've got the buttons, the crossfader, and you've also got the effects dial here. And then we had to work, obviously, with the music guys as well to have music that fitted those elements because we didn't want it to be alien. We didn't want you to be crossfading but actually doing some random music thing. You had to be cutting from one track to another or cutting one track out. We didn't want to make a simulator, but we wanted to make something that was at least based in, in uh, in kind of the DJ world. Freestyle Games is situated across two different locations in the UK. We have a London studio, which is where we are today, and that's the office where all the music is created. So this studio is quite unusual for a, a video game developer in that it's a room full of DJs and turntables. Freestyle has been in Leamington since we, we started in 2002, and it's always been dev-focused. That's kind of where our games were. We'd never had this whole music development side before. Um, when we started to think about building our own team rather than just using external people, it was kind of obvious that a lot of the talents in London, there seemed no need to try and force people out of it. The talents here, they're here, they're creative, they're feeding off the London music scene. They've all got their own uh, kind of DJ related things outside of, outside of work as well. We wanted these guys to still feel like DJs and music producers that they are and not be drawn into the kind of too much into the dev side, but then still be able to work with the dev team. So we have, um, the guys regularly talk on the phone, they're regularly coming up, or our design team's coming down, and, and there's a good collaboration. Um, but it was more about keeping a, a music vibe and a music feel in this studio. Well, we have quite a few different roles in the studio here. Um, we have a scratch DJ, Blakey. We also have a lot of producer DJs who, um, who 
put the tracks together. They essentially compose the level, they compose the gameplay, and they work closely with the design team on how to finesse and improve the gameplay. We also have a small team of uh, uh, DJs who come up with the initial concepts for the ways that we could blend tracks together. But it takes a game developer's touch to add that um, finesse that uh, you need to create a great rhythm action game. And so they send us lots of feedback on the mixes saying, maybe you could tweak the mix like this or make it a little bit more intense here because that'll give a better gaming experience. We have remixes here who love blending odd tracks together and hearing interesting blends, um, have fun ears in terms of how to mix records together. It's not a safe approach to the way we could have put the music together for DJ Hero. It was a, it was a fun and slightly, in places, slightly out there, but that's, that's what I love about it and that's what I hope people are going to enjoy about the product is that they, DJing is playing with music. The fact that the music for the game was created in London, especially we, we were on Brit Lane in the East End of London, and um, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of diversity around here. There's a lot of different stuff going on musically. All the DJs we have here, are, you know, DJs in their own in their own right. They've all got their own careers going on, and they pretty much all of them play quite eclectic music. So we're, we're here. We're into a lot of different styles of music. Metro.